okay guys welcome to my youtube channel in today's lesson i will be teaching you a chemistry lesson that will be looking at the dilution of solution so without wasting much of your time let's go straight into the definition of what dilution is so dilution is the process of adding a solvent such as distilled water to a solution to make it less concentrated so imagine you have a solution that is more concentrated and you want to make it less concentrated so you add water to it to make it less concentrated so that process which you are doing is called the dilution so for example example if we add two cubic decimeter of water to a seven cubic decimeter solution of concentration of two more per cubic decimeter then we have diluted the solution so let's look at this diagram here for example we have this beaker here and in this beaker here we have water which contains some moles of a solute dissolved in this one and let's say the volume here is seven which is this one here and then the concentration here is actually two moles per cubic decimeter then if we add water which is two cubic decimeter here so what we are going to do here is to make it less concentrated because these particles now they'll be scattered throughout the solution so making it less concentrated so what you should know here the concept to know here is that um uh, the number of moles is constant during dilution so the number of moles is constant during dilution imagine these particles are the moles so the number of moles during dilution is constant meaning that the number of moles that you had before dilution must be equal to the number of moles that you have after dilution so let's say ni represents the initial number of moles so we are saying initial number of moles then is equal to uh, nf uh, nf which stands for final number of moles so what we mean here is that uh, if before dilution here the number of moles here are one two three four five six seven 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, then this will be the same number of moles even after we dilute. We dilute, for example, after adding water, we will count again and find that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It will be the same. The reason why it is the same is because during dilution, you are not introducing any new particles to the solution you are just adding water all right so that is why the number of moles before dilution and after dilution is the same now imagine we have um this and um, before adding imagine before adding we have this solution how can we calculate the number of moles number of moles is given by uh uh, ni which is this one initial before dilution is equal to the concentration before dilution which is we are calling concentration initial times see? the volume before dilution which we are calling volume initial so if you don't know anything about concentration please click on the video whose link is appearing here so that you can learn more about concentration in the first introductory lesson that i did on concentration all right so this is the formula for calculating the number of moles in this solution before dilution now imagine we dilute it like that so how can we calculate the number of moles in such a solution we have diluted this initial uh, final number of moles we can calculate them also by saying final number of moles is equal to uh, the final concentration that this solution is going to have times the final volume that this solution is going to have so now notice something here since the uh, initial number of moles are given by this and then the final number of moles are given by this and we know that the initial number of moles is equal to the final number of moles and the uh, initial number of moles is which is this one is equal to this so meaning that we can simply substitute this with this so we can get this and put it there and also we know this is final number of moles which is this one is also equal to this one so we can pick this one and put it there so we can say where there's this will put um, um concentration initial time c 
a volume of final then we get this equal sign we put there then here again where there is the number of moles final we put the concentration final times the volume final so now this equation now becomes what the dilution equation or the dilution law so this equation is very important it can be used to calculate the final concentration of a solution after you dilute or the final volume of the solution after you dilute it can also be used to calculate the initial concentration uh, before dilution it can also be used to calculate the initial volume before dilution all right so let's look at an example uh, like the same one here provided let's say the question says uh, what is the concentration of the new solution so this solution here what is its uh, new concentration because before ad, uh, diluting it was like this now after we dilute it is like this now they are asking us what is its uh, new uh, concentration here so for us to find the concentration here we need to use this formula here so the new concentration is actually the final concentration so what we are going to do here is to first understand the initial concentration which is this before we added water it was two more per cubic decimeter then vi which is also initial volume before we added this other water here all right so the initial volume is seven cubic decimeter so now this one cf is the final concentration which we need to know after adding the uh, water to it then this one is the final volume also after adding water so final volume is actually this volume which we had so it is from here to there which which can be found by the this volume which had seven plus two which will be nine cubic decimeter so now since we know our uh, initial concentration is two so say two times seven which is the uh, initial volume then equals concentration final we don't know times volume final which is a uh, nine then we multiply two times seven fourteen equals then concentration final times nine it will give us nine concentration final so we want to know concentration final which is cf so we divide by nine here also here by nine so that we make it cf the subject of the formula so we'll say nine into nine it will cancel then we'll say for nine into 14 then we'll have 1.6 i've just rounded this to one decimal point it was giving me it was giving me 1.55 something like that so which is equal to then here will remain with it cf then we'll say cf is equal to now we'll put the unit so it will be 1.60 more per cubic decimeter as the answer so this is the final concentration of this solution all right so uh, it's very very important to understand so from here we can now understand what the dilution law states so the dilution law states that um uh, the dilution law states that during dilution the amount of moles and the mass of the solute in the solution remains constant while the volume and the concentration of the solution changes so what are they trying to say here so when you are diluting something make sure you should know that the number of moles or the mass of the solute in that solution you are diluting stays the same but the volume after you dilute must change so how does it changes it increases and the concentration also must change how does it change it must decrease decrease because that's what dilution is making the concentration of a solution less concentrated so for example what we are seeing here is this in this solution here before we actually mixed it the number of moles was here we counted the, the number of moles these particles were 14 all right and then the volume was what seven 
and then the concentration was in two. Now, after dilution, the number of moles was still 14. But how about the volume? We said the volume went to 9. How about the concentration? The concentration after diluting, we have found that it is 1.6, which is less than what we had at the beginning, which is which is 2 more per cubic decimeter. All right, so I think you understand. So now, why is dilution important in chemistry? Dilution is important because of this statement. Most solutions used in laboratories are purchased when already prepared in high concentrations known as the stock solutions. So to achieve the desired concentration for a particular reaction, distilled water is added to the stock solution. This is what is known as the dilution. So what uh, this statement is trying to say is this. So uh, most of the chemicals that we use in the uh, chemistry laboratory, for example, uh, such as the sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, or ammonia, or even sodium hydroxide, aqua sodium hydroxide. When we purchase them, we purchase them in high concentration. All right. So in their concentrated form, uh, we cannot use them in their concentrated form uh, when making it chemical reactions for example i can't react magnesium with concentrated sulfuric acid which is at around um, let's say 18 molar that will be too dangerous so for us to be able to use that sulfuric acid we must um, dilute it to make it less concentrated by adding actually some distilled water to a certain volume of hydrochloric, I mean sulfuric acid. So this dilution law, the equation that we have derived is very, very important where dilution is easy. Concern that's the one we use in chemistry when we are diluting. So guys, this was just an introductory part to dilution. So we are going to do more examples in the next video so that you understand. So we have come to the end of this video. If you have learned something in this lesson, please give this video a like. It will help this video go a long way in the YouTube algorithm, all right? And if you haven't considered subscribing, please hit that red subscribe button so that you don't miss on my next video. It will be so interesting, all right, and educative, all right? So if also this video has been educative to you, let me know in the comment section. I will appreciate it to give me the morale to continue doing what I do on this channel. So as for now, guys, thank you for watching. Bye and see you in my next video. Peace.